Hi friends, Scott here. Welcome back to another story time. This month we're reading The Winter Train by Susan Eisern and Esther Garcia. Dawn was breaking in the northern forest as the leaves fell from the trees. The animals woke up and started to pack their bags. Help! I can't find my toothbrush, said Wildcat worriedly. I need another suitcase. Can anyone lend me one? said Deer, who was quite vain. Don't forget to turn off the light, Rabbit. Last year it was on for more than six months, said Badger. Once their bags were packed, it was time to say goodbye. Don't worry about me, said White Owl. Someone's got to stay behind and look after the forest. Anyway, I love the cold. Winter goes by really fast. We'll be fine, said Frog to the fish, who were swimming sadly in the river. I'll miss you, Den, said Fox, waving goodbye to his home. At midday, they all met at the foot of the oldest tree. That was where the train stopped. Every time we leave the northern forest, I feel homesick, sighed Partridge. And when we leave the southern forest, we feel exactly the same, said Hedgehog. Hang on, wait, don't leave me here, yelled Tortoise, who was the last to arrive, as usual. Then, suddenly, choo-choo, choo-choo, the winter train was arriving. Choo-choo, choo-choo. As it did every year at this time, it would take the animals from the northern forest to the southern forest, where they could spend the cold months in a warmer climate. Once they were aboard the train, the animals found their seats. I prefer to be by the window, otherwise I get all queasy, said Groundhog. I can trust you, can't I? said Goat, as he sat down next to Wolf. I'll be more comfortable in the coat closet, said Bat who preferred dark places. And so the winter train chugged toward the south. Although the journey would take a few hours, the animals were all in high spirits, chatting, singing, and playing cards. Suddenly, Jeanette jumped out of her seat. Oh no, she cried. We've forgotten Squirrel. We've got to go back and get her. But if we go back, we could get trapped in the snow, said Beaver, pointing to the dark clouds outside the window. We can't leave Squirrel behind. She can't stand the cold, said Ferret. Well, that's settled then. Let's go and find her, said all the animals together. The conductor brought the train to a halt and turned back. It got colder and colder, and the first snowflakes began to fall. When they got back to the northern forest, the landscape was covered in a blanket of white. Jeanette jumped off the train and bounced through the snow toward Squirrel's house. Squirrel's tree stood in a lonely spot. Jeanette climbed up the trunk until she reached Squirrel's den. In one corner, her friend was huddled up in a ball. She was shivering so much that Jeanette could hear her teeth rattling together. Squirrel, come on! The train's waiting for us, said Jeanette, waking her with a start. You came back to rescue me, said Squirrel, shuddering from the cold. Last night I was counting stars until late, and when I woke up, the train had already left. Jeanette and Squirrel ran back to the train. On seeing that Squirrel was safe, all of the animals jumped up and down with joy and smothered her with hugs and kisses. The conductor started up the engine once again, but it had snowed so much that the train tracks were completely covered. They were trapped. The sun was setting behind the mountains. It was getting colder and colder, and the animals began to lose hope. After thinking for a while, Bear had a good idea. Let's try to clear the snow off the tracks. We can do it if we work together. And so the animals jumped down from the train and began to clear away the snow. Bear shoveled great clumps with his huge claws, while the smallest animals cleaned off the rest with their paws and wings. Soon there was no snow left on the rails. 
The heat of the motors had melted the snow closest to the train. Some of the animals helped by pushing the train from the back. Then suddenly, choo-choo, choo-choo, the train started to move. Choo-choo, choo-choo. The animals quickly jumped back onto the train and returned to their seats. They'd done it. Night fell over the northern forest as the snow covered the trees. Squirrel was still curled up trying to get warm under Eagle's huge wings. The animals smiled, satisfied. Some of them were holding paws while others were fast asleep, snoring quietly. Meanwhile, the winter train chugged through the dark, dark night, through the freezing air, toward the promise of the southern forest. The end. Thank you for joining me again for story time. Now let's pop on over to Ronnie for an amazing craft. Hi everyone, this is Ronnie here at the Colorado Railroad Museum and so excited. Uh, to get started on our crafts for this year. So first of all, Happy New Year. Uh, so our craft has to do with the winter train. And as you remember, it's about a bunch of animals coming, uh, leaving the, the forest to go somewhere else where it's a little bit warmer. And so they started thinking about something about animals and how they probably don't have a whole lot of food this time of year. So we are going to make a train bird seed. So I'm going to show you right here. And it's going to be so much fun and so easy. You'll really enjoy it. So let's get started. First things you need is a cookie cutter. So I already made a train cookie cutter. So I thought I'd use a caboose to make it a little bit different. You also need a plastic knife so that you can spread the peanut butter. Um, a straw so you can make the little hole to put the string through. Um, we also need the string. You could use regular yarn, but I had leftover Christmas string, so I'm going to use that today. I'm using toast because it makes it more solid and it's easier to put the peanut butter on. Our peanut butter. Now I'm going to get hungry. And I, I put um, a pan with bird seed in it. It makes it just easier to put the toast in and put the seed on. There we go. So the first thing we're going to do is get our toast out. I know it looks a little burnt, but at least it'll give it a little bit more stability. And I'm getting my cookie cutter, which is a caboose. I'm going to push really hard. Now there's two sides. One is not as sharp and this side is a little sh more sharp. Make sure you use a really sharp side. And we have to push really hard. Uh, maybe wiggle it around a little bit. I've been pushing it through the bread. There we go. I think it's a lot easier when you do it right away after the toast bread. So there's our caboose. No, it doesn't look quite as good because we're wrestling with it a little bit, but for the most part, there it is. Okay, now for the best part. We're gonna put peanut butter on it. The other really nice thing about doing this craft is that if you get a little bit hungry, you can just go ahead and have a little snack while you're doing this. Oh, before you do that, we need to put our little, um, our little hole in there so that you'll be able to hang it. There it is. And when you're putting the peanut butter on it, make sure that you try not to cover it. But if you do, you still have your straw. Be very careful. Spread it kind of evenly. But yes, I'm thinking about how this time of year the birds might not be able to find food or rabbits or other creatures. Maybe you could put 
carrots or apples out for animals if you're worried about them. Now that we have the peanut butter on one side, we're going to bring our tray of seeds and then we're going to smush it in there very carefully. And if you want to kind of move things around so it makes it look more like a caboose, you're more than welcome to do that. We're going to move our tray again and then very carefully put peanut butter on the other side. Usually you have more time so you can uh, wait till one side dries out a little bit more and then do the other side. But we want to make sure we can get as much food into those little animals as we can. Okay, so there's our second side. I'm going to bring our tray back. I'm going to smush it on there. And while we're in here, I'm going to try to shape it a little bit better. Okay. Now you're like, oh no, the peanut butter's covered it. If you can remember where it is, go ahead and put your straw back through there. There it is. I thought I lost it. Okay, so now it's all done. The only other thing we have left to do is feed our string through the middle. and then you can hang it up on your tree. Now since this is such a nice little craft, you can get together with your family and make a whole bunch of them and put them on the trees. And there you go. It looks like an ornament and that's okay. You can have all kinds of ornaments all over the time, all, all the time. And then we have our little train and then we have our caboose. You can hang them all over your trees and watch the birds eat the bird seed. All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, hopefully to see you again and have a good week. Bye. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Commenting and sharing in particular may qualify as virtual engagements for important funding programs like the SCFD.